guys, welcome back to the workshop. Glad he's a way of the day, chose to click the video. So, got a cool item today and a couple of things that I want to make for it. Um, it's a plow plane. Now, it's a kind of older vintage one, really good condition, but there's a couple of pieces missing for it. I'll show you that and I'll explain it to you what we're going to do. So, this here is the plow plane. And what this would be used for would be to create like tongue and tongue and groove or tongue and cheek uh, joints. The kind of joints that you would join two boards. Um, it can it can make you know uh, rebates in that as well. It's, it's a very useful tool when you're making like carpentry drawers, any kind of box that you want to make that you want to slide a piece of wood into it. Very useful tool. Um, woodworkers, experienced woodworkers will know exactly what this plane is for. Um, so, and I've got all the cutters weight as well. Now, I've not done much to it. Uh, I gave it a wee clean up. It was a wee bit dirty. All in that, it's in really good condition. Um, it's it is missing a couple of things. There would be a a death stop right here. So that is one of the things that I'm going to make. And then uh, you would get bars that were like half the size. Um, so that's something that I want to make as well. So basically, but the cutter, we just use one of these wee cutters. Basically, the cutter, down, um, the cutter would go in here. And you got these grooves there like that. And your cutter would sit in there on the groove, on this uh, screw cap here. Um, and then you've got this bit here that would sort of lock it against the plane itself. All right. And then you, as long as you've got it in one of these grooves here, then you've got this kind of lever cap that slides in there, and then it presses down on the tappy, the blade there, and it forces it down in that direction. Um, and obviously the depth, the depth stop here, um, that would... Uh, you, you would use that to obviously get the kind of depth that you're wanting um, and that's essentially what it is so that is what I want to make this depth stop and, and shorter bars um, but I'll show you uh, looking on eBay for these parts um, I couldn't really find them in the places that I, that I could they were kind of pricey so I managed to find another plow plane it's basically a goner I'll show you that in here is this one now as i said it's a goner uh, and I, I wasn't planning to make a video on this as well it was like a sort of last minute thing and um, so i plan to take a bit of steel after the boat with this and um, this fence here and I, I think this is uh i think it's cast iron and it's like plated with nickel or something i'm not sure um, and then this bar here we'll use this bar and um, and we'll half it and that can be for the short bars. Now, as I say, I I, I I did clean that up. That one was basically like that. Um, so, I man, this one, it's, to me, it's irreparable. It's, it's already, all, you know, it's all broken, all that. The fence has been broken. It's been welded. The body itself is in pretty good condition. So, I'll, I'll definitely keep a hold of that. Um, but I that's that is about it. Um, and the cutters are in pretty good condition. I'm not really going to do anything today. Um, um, <laughs> sharpen them is what what I'll need today, uh, and then I want to make a wee box, just like a wee box, just to hold them all in place. So that is what we'll do in the video. So we will start by doing this bar, and then once we've uh, made these things, uh, I will show you uh, the kind of joints that it makes. So I've, I've drew a couple here, and we'll do this one here. This one is probably one of the more traditional ones um, that you'd use, you know, electric tools would create these joints using a, you know, electric router. But you can make these joints with that plane, you know, just your basic ra uh, rabbits, rebates. But you can also create joints like this as well. So uh, it's definitely a, a, a cool um, plane that I'm excited to use. So uh, let's, let's get to it. Bang on. Yeah, let's have a look, see. 
right. Mm. Nice. So I'll just fire on with the next one and then we'll move on to the next part. Alright, there we go, there's the two wee rods. Looking pretty good. And it's importantly the same size. So and this is these ones will probably get used smell, so I'll just switch smell them now. There we go, nice. <coughs> so this bit here. So I need to work out what I take for this. Uh, and then we'll need to make ourselves a wee rod. A wee rod that will fit in there. Uh, a wee rod that will fit in there and no is wide. So so it's looking a bit you know if we cut just cut this bit off, you know, like here. Here. One of these bits look. Maybe this bit here because it's longer. I should just cut right here. Cross there. Do this bit. And then we can uh, file it to clean it up. And um, we'll just do a wee bit of filing here. So there we go, there's our wee plate. Go to as try to keep it as square as possible, as flat as possible. I think I'm all right. Uh, I think this is like grey cast iron as well. But I do. So I'm just going to finish. Just get a wee sand. So made the wee plate, sanded it down to its nice, and it'll fit. In there we no obstruction for the for the fence. And I've got this wee bit of milled steel here. And all we need about half of it, I think. Cause we only want it to come up to like there, so we're only gonna need uh, let's see about that much there. So why we'll need to we need to turn that down to fit this whilst um leaving this well we we'll probably need to leave that six oh we could leave that that maybe I just need to make sure I've got the right size drill bit because I'm gonna try and you know create an interference fit on it. Um, which I'll show you that when we get to it. And we'll throw it in the lathe and we'll start turning it down. Turn that down. Five nine. So let's just clean it up a wee bit with a file and some sandpaper. Mm. 
Oh, that's a nice tight fit. As we want to mark out where we want to drill this hole, which is going to be around about somewhere here, I think. But we'll mark it out, we'll, we'll no guess it. <laughs> and they'll uh, use this drill piece. There we go, that's where we want to put it. Right. There we go. We want to drill Just get a wee bit of oil on it. That's a nice clean hole. Right. So, obviously it's not going to fit the new. No way it's going to fit. Oh, do you know by the way? I think that that is going to fit. With just a wee hammer, then we can cut it off. Right, let's walk in the new. Oh, yeah, that's what I get. <laughs> I knew that wasn't a steel, that's a uh, grey cast iron. Ah, there you go then, eh? But that's not going to stop us. I'll be back to you when we're at this point again. <laughs> I'll use a bit of mild steel instead. Uh... That's pretty tight in there, man. I think that will actually do, by the way. Oh, sweet. Nice, let's tighten it up. Nice. I've got the the depth stop in one of my holders um, and uh, I lined it up with the chuck so I know that it's perfectly, you know, 90 to that. Uh, and then I've got the end mill in the chuck and I've got it at its highest point so I should be able to skim that there and take it down to the thickness I want and then lower it and then finish it like that and that should be perfectly flat and then I came to take it down to how thin it's actually meant to be so that bit came off the rod but uh, that's not a problem I'm gonna do what I originally wanted to do which then weld it so that it does not move because there we go Perfect on this as well. Got it as thin as I wanted. I did, I say I did sort of melt it a wee bit there. Um, but it's all nice and flat. Um, I just need to get a wee bit of sanding. Uh, I, I'm going to call that done. 
The settling was pretty as when it was thicker, but it's certainly more functional. Um, I, I did bump through it when I was welding it there, but it's one piece now, so um, as long as it fits, which it should, the bar fitted before, so it's, it's got to fit before. Uh, it's got to fit again, why would it know? <laughs> and then I've got a couple of marks there for um, that was uh, in the holder in the lathe because these screws are hard and steel and that's just mild steel so it's but you're not going to see that when it's in it so and uh, it was what was it this way that was the other way I went to it no see there you go right up heading out the way It was a wee bit of work to get there, but I got it done in the end. Um, and I, the, uh, the lathe with the end mill made mince me of that. It took it off, no bother. It was pretty hard to, um, when I when I took uh, a cut for the bottom, and then I had to reposition the tool holder by, you know, lifting it up um, to get that perfect again. Um, but it's, it's flat enough, so that will do. Uh, these I'll probably just hit them with a wire wheel and then get them wee sharpen. You know. So I gave them a wee clean up. It's uh, it's made a small difference, but eck, I'll just have to put up with them the way they are. Uh, I just never really wanted to touch the, I know they're all raggedy and tarnished like that, but you know, I wanted, wanted to keep them the way they are. So let's start making the holder for these. Um, and I'm just going to go through it fast and I'll show you it at the end. And then we can wrap the video up by doing the tongue and groove joint. So I've got this old piece of, I don't know if it's, pine or spruce and um, I'm going to use this for the front and the back uh, and then I've got this old piece a thin MDF and the cutters are 3 mil thick and this bit here is 3.5 so I'm going to use this as the middle bit um, and that'll give me the perfect gap to slide the cutters in so I get to that and I'll show you that So I've got my bits, um, let's just check for size, good there, good, right there we go, that's sweet, but what I need to do the now is uh, I need to scrape this uh, white surface because it's smooth and the glue won't take to it so I'll just scrape back the new. I'll probably just run it out of the sander actually. That's what I'll do. Just run it out of the sander and then we'll glue it up. Hmm. A bit tight. And that's because I took that paint off it. That is because I took the paint off. Right. So I've got an idea. So I've got some veneer here. Um, I'll just use a bit of this walnut here. Aye. So I'll just obviously I'll just I'll glue it to the bit and then I'll cut a bit of walnut out, a bit of the veneer out and then I'll then I'll glue that to this strip. Um 
that seems like the best way. Try and work quick as well. Too much. Hopefully, this works. Right, nice. They go in there nicely. Yeah. So I'm just gonna let that dry for an hour or two, uh, and then we can finish it by, you know, sanding it, putting the chamfers on it, whatever else I'm gonna do. This should be nice and dry. <laughs> Let us see. So and no nice. Sweet. Right. So what I want to do and show you. So I want to put a channel for like that. Like that on the bottom and on the side. There's my Stand up, not too concerned with that. There we go. Perfect. So, you can see what I'm going for. You know. I think I look pretty. That came out all right, considering I didn't put much thought into it. Just gonna finish it off with bottle and seed oil, and then we can put the cutters in it. So there we go. I gave that a few coats uh, last day, um, so it's nice and smooth, and I kind of like the shape of it, you know, I never, to be honest, I never actually put that much thought into it, um, doing this came after, <laughs> well, you know, once I'd put it together, and then I thought, uh, doing that will make it look a bit nicer, you know, a bit more appealing, but, alright, uh, so, Let's see that. Right, 
Well, they might all fit in there nicely. That's pretty sweet. See, because this, uh, this bit came at the end, I never, I never thought about how much these would stick up, so you can't really see them. <laughs> you can't really see the wee bit at the back. But, <laughs> eh, eh, but nah, I'm, I'm not too fussed about that. It's somewhere to put them out the way so they're safe and they've got their own place rather than them just sitting in a pile in a drawer or a box somewhere like that um, I don't know I've just got a wee thing about that just the things that I use or that are valuable but not uh, you know I like to pick them up on the wall so I know where they are so I can see them and use them because uh, a drawer is you know that's to me that's that's where tools go to die. <laughs> you know, you put you you put a tool in a drawer, um, and you forget about it. Well, for me anyway, I forget about it. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I'm going to sharpen a couple of these, uh, and then I'll sh we'll we'll do that joint. I'll need to dimension some wood up, um, and then I'll show you that joint. Eh? And then we'll get this up on the wall, obviously. I need to find a place to put it, mind you. Sorry. So I'm just going to sharpen this V1 here. It's about a centimetre. Um, and we'll use this one. Because that's about a third of this wood. So, so on one of them we'll put the male end. The female end with another one. Um, but I need to flatten them. This is the wood that I use to make that horn uh, for my saw. So we want to... I want to flatten it. I guess it wouldn't really matter, but I'll flatten it down anyway. And I'll sharpen that. So we'll get back to these when we're going to cut the job. Let's just check and see and make sure we're flush. Because once we do the joint, Join them together, playing them. We want it to look like it's one piece. Um, might be a wee bit. Maybe I took a wee bit too much of it. One of these bits right here. Let's really see on camera. But see a wee bit there, but ach, just for demonstration purposes anyway. So, um, so I let's go. So obviously, this is the first time I'm using this myself, you know, um, I have not used it yet. You see, and this is what we made the depth stop for. Um, so I probably want the depth as uh, deep the cut is deep as how thick the blade is, so uh, about eight mile, uh, about there will be good. Right, so my first go, let's see, oh, see, it's, it's definitely difficult to keep it straight. Definitely difficult to keep it straight, that's for sure. That's his dirty old depth. So we put that mare up at this side. That's us, eh? So wanna... Yep. That's just doing it all. And you know, that leaves are really clean. You know what I mean? Look at that. That's a really nice, clean cut. Considering that was my first go weight as well, look. and of course it always helps and um, to have sharp blades. Look. So I I do this one now, all right, and 
I just need to move it to the right position, which is basically right there. We're all depth there, and um, I think I messed up a wee bit this year's wee ridge. I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> um, I don't know what happened. It's like it was sort of gone off to the side or something like that. But we'll just do this side now, uh, and then we'll see how, how it fits. And if it doesn't fit, you can always just use a sharp chisel just to flush that out and you know, fix that up. Like. Definitely an interesting plane to use because interesting I said I mean difficult you know because with a normal plane there's you know you've got a back horn that you good grip and then you get a front horn for good grip. It seems like you've not really get anywhere to hold. No I could look and I can see it's really shiny there, so that means it's been getting held at this bit. But shiny up here. So it's being held at this bit as well. But I do find it the easiest just to sort of hold it here and push in towards the piece whilst pushing down. And uh, that seems to be the easiest way. Just take my time pretty nicely. Look. Um, I don't know if it's perfect, I don't know if it's on. Alright there, but well dodgy there. <laughs> and that's just because um when I'm play when I was playing in there I was leaning a wee bit to that side um, so it just knocked too much away from there. But that's alright, you know. Simply a demonstration purpose just to show you what it does and the fact of the matter is, is that I suck with it because that was my first time using it, <laughs> you know, and it's just a simple case of practice, you know. But I'm rather excited about it and it's a really, really cool plane and I will certainly put it to use. And I'm just going to throw that up there. Um, I'm just pretty draw a wee... So I hope you've enjoyed that there, guys. Uh, I really like restoration projects. Even though this wasn't really a restoration project, um, it was in a way because I cleaned it and I made it look better, but uh, restoration projects, I really, really enjoy the kind of type of projects, you know, where you take something that's really old and mangled, basically for the bin, and you bring it back to life to a working condition, you know, like, um, I, I really enjoy restoration projects, but I'm, I'm, no, I'm no planning to keep it in the way that it is. Um, see, I don't... Hang is just hanging for screws. I don't I don't like that. The axes, you know, they are I'm no bothered with them because I don't really use them that much, you know what I mean? But I wanna make a holder for that. I wanna make a holder for my router plane. I wanna make holders for my sole planes. Uh, I'm gonna make new holders for my chisels. Like uh, like this one. I, I like the idea of that. So uh, and it's it's small and compact. Um, so I plan to make one like that for all my other ones and put that up here um, and then I'm going to put all these ones out on this wall along with the holders I make for the router and plow plane and the sole planes so I have all my planes on this wall um, and there's a few other things that I'm going to make holders as I said so I and there's a few other uh, restoration projects um, that I'm going to be doing in the next two videos and then we'll be getting back to uh, some actual woodworking projects. Again, I've got a good few ideas. Things I like to in here. Things for outdoors. Um, few a few a few different things. That's just something about me. My mind uh, is overloaded with ideas. Majority of them not attainable as of such. 
<laughs> you know, but that doesn't stop you from thinking and dreaming and pushing towards that dream, you know, like, because ideals don't just come from nowhere, ideals come from somewhere, um, and the way I see it is that most, the majority of the things that we've got in the world, the ideals came from, were influenced by nature and the way that nature works, so if you're stumped for ideals, look at nature and you will be inspired. So, there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you in the next video, alright? Take it easy and God bless guys. Don't forget to build some. See you later guys.